Hello, my name is Todd Rothman and I want to welcome you back to Organic Chemistry 1. In this video, we're going to go through the basics of an atom. So we're going to talk about its structural information, the classification of the atom, and we'll talk a little bit about the electrons that surround it. Okay, so here are the two topics that we're going to be focusing on for this. It's the general classification of an atom, and we're going to talk about the electron configuration. Okay, so let's get started. Now, actually, before we do, let me make one important point here. Uh, for the first chapter, we're going to do problem solving, but there's a lot more of just a review. So there's a lot of review that we're going to see here, but it's so important, and please, let me emphasize the importance that you really do understand most of what we're going to learn in this chapter because it carries throughout the whole year, okay? So you're going to see things in Gen Chem right now, and you're going to, you've learned it many times back in high school and college, but again, just go through it one last time. Make sure that you get these concepts down, and then the areas that we need practice, we're going to do a lot more problem solving. So following this theory video, this is a theory video with some problems, I will be putting up a video on problem solving. So that'll kind of focus you in on how to use this theory in a problem solving point of view. Okay, let's get started. So the first thing we have to talk about is what is an atom? And an atom consists of two areas, if we want to think of it this way. There's this central nucleus which has both protons and neutrons in it, right? So as we see here, neutrons are neutral. There's no charge to them. Protons are positive. They're about the same size in mass. So they have about the same mass, a one atomic mass unit. And they're located in the nucleus, in the central portion of an atom. Now, surrounding that nucleus is what we call extra nuclear space, right? It's all the space outside of the nucleus but we kind of divide out or we find this region of space that's special because of course extra nuclear space really is in, in infinite right it goes on forever things outside the nucleus but there is a certain region of space which we call the electronic cloud area or the area where electrons will be found and so that's what we use here is this dotted line okay so that represents the boundary of where electrons are going to be located, anywhere within this um, boundary inward towards the nucleus. Okay, now when you look at an atom on the period table, or element on the period table, we have three things to consider. The first one is the actual symbol, in this case carbon, right? So we have the symbol. Above it is going to be the atomic number, and please remember that the atomic number tells us how many protons this atom has, not neutrons, okay? Neutrons is something that varies. It's something that will change depending, it could be the same type of atom, but it can have a different number of neutrons. But protons is the signature that makes this atom a carbon. If it's six, it's carbon. All atoms that have six protons are carbon, okay? but the number of neutrons can change. It could be six, it could be seven. So that's not something that we can use as a signature of carbon as much as the number of protons. So the atomic number is the number of protons. And then below the, the symbol, we have the atomic weight. Now, sometimes it's illustrated as atomic weight. Other times it could be illustrated as atomic mass. Now, the difference between the two is that the atomic weight is the average of all masses for this atom. Okay, so if it a carbon is six protons, but it can have a variable number of neutrons. It's still carbon. And so what we do is we come up with an average mass. Um, and so that's called the atomic weight. Now, the atomic weight or the mass, if you're looking at one individual example of this atom, which we call an isotope of carbon, well, then it's the atomic mass, and that includes both protons and neutrons, okay? So remember that every proton and neutron are roughly the same mass. And so if you have two, one of each, then the mass is two, okay, atomic mass units. So in our case, this says 12.01, and the reason why is because the 01, 0.01 is because this is an average, okay? We have carbon 12. Look down here. We have carbon 12. 
right here, and we could also have carbon 13. What's the difference between them? One pro, uh, sorry, one neutron difference, right? So carbon is carbon because it's got six protons, atomic number six. But the difference here, the mass difference, is a difference of one neutron. If it has six neutrons and six protons, then its mass is 12. If it's got six protons and seven neutrons, its mass is 13. So the way we actually get, and you don't have to worry about this calculation, but I'm just refreshing your memory. Uh, you look at the abundance of each of these versions or these isotopes of carbon, and you can use that abundance as part of your calculation to determine the average mass, okay, the average weight. And so in this case, there's 98.9% carbon 12 and 1.1 percent carbon 13 so 98 or take the fraction of that times 12 so 0.989 times 12 atomic mass unit and you add that to 0 0.011 times 13 you combine those two results together that gives us our weight our average weight of 12.011 okay so that's basically what we're doing we're multiplying its abundance by its isotope number the, the mass number for that isotope now again isotopes are atoms that have the exact same number of protons but they have a difference a variable number of neutrons that's the isotope okay now hydrogen is another classical example so you can have hydrogen one you can have hydrogen 2, hydrogen 3. But the thing about hydrogen, okay, is that hydrogens, we change the symbol. We don't do that with carbon. Carbon 12 and carbon 13 both have a symbol of C. But for hydrogen, we actually change its symbol. So hydrogens are, these are all hydrogens. The difference here is whether, here's the Whoop, let me, uh, here's the mass number. It's either mass of one, two, or three. That means that in all these cases, the atomic number is one because they're all hydrogen. So they all have one proton, but they can have one neutron, two neutrons, or three. Uh, sorry, one neutron or two neutrons in addition to its one proton. These are the different isotopes of hydrogen and again the way we represent this is not by writing H three times this is actually H when it has a mass number of one if it has a mass number of two we call it D deuterium this is deuterium and again that's just hydrogen but it's one that has an extra proton sorry extra neutron in the in, in its um, um, nucleus now to, uh, tritium, tritium is a hydrogen that has two neutrons in the nucleus. Okay, so these are the differences, but they're all hydrogen. Now, the reason why I'm emphasizing this is because this tends to throw people off. Sometimes they see H, sometimes we'll use D or T, and the reason why is because we like to label locations in a molecule. The best way to do it is what's called isotopic labeling. We could, instead of using traditional hydrogen, the most abundant form of hydrogen, one proton, we could use one proton and one neutron version of hydrogen, which is deuterium. So you'll see a D. But just think of these all as the same. They're all hydrogen, okay? They're all different isotopes of hydrogen. Okay, now notice that in this whole first page, we haven't discussed electrons because electrons is something that's variable. Now, neutrons vary, but they're kind of within a range. So in other words, you can have an atom with a different number of neutrons, but it's not that large of a difference between the different versions of that atom. Electrons change all the time. It's not constant. Once you have the number of neutrons in that atom, it's set with that number of neutrons. It doesn't change. Okay, electrons through life are constantly changing, so we tend to treat them separate from the rest of the atoms.